for new students and family and friends. And today we have a wonderful speaker and topic. I am a star hero. And you can see with me, I have Sister Shireen Chada from our Tampa Center, Tampa, Florida. And she's been in this knowledge for over 25 years. And she has, she, what I would say personally speaking is that Shireen is very innovative in such a, a quiet way. She just gets it done. There's no show, there's no frills. And she also puts others ahead of herself. Meaning, you know, yeah, making others shine. So she is a star hero maker. So this is a, a, a perfect topic for us to enjoy. And she does these lovely things with Hollywood blockbusters and turn them into knowledgeful stories where we can glean wisdom from and have fun while we're doing it. And she's produced CDs, books, and there's two websites I'm going to hook you up with in the chat. I'll, I'll put the link uh, to Yum Yum Yogi and Release Your Wings. So thank you again, everyone, for coming. And um, thank you, Shireen, for being with us today, because I know it's late for you there in Florida. It's not that late. <laughs> I'm very happy to be here with all of you. It's not that late. No worries. And um, I'm glad you invited me. So I was really looking forward to meeting all of you because I heard you're just beginning your journey of spiritual life. And so um, I feel like your grandmother. <laughs> And, um, and so I'm going to share with you and I want you to take it like you would take what your grandmother is sharing. Is that sounds good? You can unmute yourself. This is a family um, and class setting. So you can, you know, make comments and ask questions. Perhaps while the, uh, her presentation, you could put your questions in the chat. It would be appreciated. If you put the questions in the chat, I don't usually read when I'm presenting. So, um, Eben, you're going to be on and you can- I will be on. Okay, fabulous. So here we go. Um, so like I was saying, I am going to share this with you and I want you to take it with the love that it's coming. Because if we want to be a hero, there are a few things we have to do. Right, and so um, we will first start with. I want you to take a few moments, not too long, and I want you to think of these questions, these two questions. Which, yes, these two questions. Can you see them? Who is your favorite real life hero, and what qualities do you like in him or her? Just take a couple of moments, not too long, and I want you to think about these questions. Baba. You don't have to um, talk it aloud. Just um, think about it. All right, now that you have thought about it, um, I want you to um, imagine your life as a hero actor in a movie, right? And I want you to see what happens to a hero actor generally. So let's say a hero actor is acting in a movie. The first thing that happens is the director and the producer's eyes are on the hero actor. There are many extras in the, move, in the movie, there are many other actors in the movie, um, but the director doesn't focus on them as much as on the hero, uh, the protagonist or the hero of the movie, the 
the focus of the director and the producer is on the hero of the movie. And so I want you to think of yourself as there is a grand epic movie going on. And in this grand epic movie, you are the hero actor. And um, a couple of um, logistical announcements. I know translation is going on into Hindi. So if I'm talking too fast, you can ask me to um, slow down. And my recommendation is that if you have any questions or suggestions, put it in the chat box or comments, anything, put it in the chat box and um, Eben will read it and tell me. Sounds good? Okay. So um, I was thinking of my favorite hero, real life hero, that the real life hero that I have met. I think it would be Dadi Janki. And the qualities that I like in her, um, as many of you know, Dadi uh, became Avyakt last year. And so the qualities that I like in her, so many uh, qualities, but her love and her caring and the way she shared and her wisdom and her um, uh, unlimited nature and deep insights into things, her courage, so many things, right? And so I can sit here and think about all of her qualities or I can, really begin to accept that, yes, I can have those qualities in me. And so I want you to open your heart and your mind into thinking that you can have those qualities in you. So I just overheard someone saying Baba. So I'm guessing you're saying Brahma Baba. And so Brahma Baba had many qualities and we shouldn't just say, oh, they were deities and you know, they, you know, they were superhuman beings. It could be anyone, right? Let's say I take Mahatma Gandhi. Mahatma Gandhi was a superhuman being and he had so many qualities and how can I get those qualities? One of the main aspects of becoming a star hero is you have to accept that these qualities are within you. And that is why you like to see those qualities in others. Um, for example, let's say if you've never eaten a mango and I ask you, do you, would you like a mango? You will say, no, not necessarily because you've never eaten it, you've never tasted it. But let's say you've had a really, really good mango, like Kesar or Alfonso, like, right? You know, really good mango. And um, I say, oh, I have this Alfonso mango, would you like it? What are you going to say? Yes, because you have tasted it before. So it's the same way with qualities. Because we have tasted these qualities before, we want them. And so you have to start opening your mind and your heart to thinking that you are a hero. You are something beyond this very ordinary life we all have, this physical ordinary life that we all have, that we are all something, we have something beyond this. And that is who the beginning of a star hero, but I'll go through a lot of steps of becoming a star hero, but that is something initially we need to accept. And so there's some key concepts that I would like to talk to you about. One is Nishche. And so the Hindi word is Nishche and it's translated as faith, but I feel Nishche is not just faith. Nishche is conviction. And so conviction is when I am totally, totally convinced that I am that. For example, let's take, um, let's say Dadi Janki has the quality of wisdom, right? She had this amazing quality of wisdom. And let's say I say, oh, I like that quality of wisdom because I have that quality inside of me. Right. So to just think that is one level, but the next level is to slowly accept. Yes, I like it because I have it. And then the deeper level is I am convinced I have conviction. Yes, 
that quality is in me and it just needs to emerge. So faith or nische is that deep, deep conviction. And how do you get to that conviction? We will get into it in this. And the next concept that we want to talk about is Maya. So Maya is, you could say, illusion or Maya is your perception of the world based on the vices. So let's say I have fear and someone walks into the door. Then my perception of that person is based on fear. And if my perception of that person is based on fear, then I'm having Maya. There's a lot of Maya going on. I'm not seeing reality. I'm just seeing the illusion of fear. And so it's very important to understand Maya because if you become a hero, no? Um, what happens in any movie, in a great movie, right? So let's say one of my favorite books, series of books is the Harry Potter series. And so let's say in the Harry Potter series, the those little kids, they had learned magic and then they sip tea in the English countryside and go to school and come home. Is there going to be a story? No, there's not going to be a story. The reason there is a story is because the kids had to face different enemies. They had to learn, they had to transform, they had to do all of those things. And so Maya is our enemy. And our enemy is not a physical person. A hero's enemy, a spiritual hero, a star hero's enemy is not a physical person. A star hero's enemy is the illusion that is created within the hero based on the vices that the hero has. And so that is Maya. And also what happens is this Maya creates an inner dialogue. So let's say I have fear and someone walks into the door, then there is an inner conversation going on. What does he want? What does she want? Why is she here? Why shouldn't she, why is she not here? So all of these, what are they going to do to me? Maybe I should go hide and they, it always happens to me, all of that conversation, right? That is also that conversation is happening because of Maya. And a hero doesn't think like that. A star hero doesn't think like that. A star hero doesn't have Maya. And to yeah, understand for a second, I just want to make sure that everyone knows that there is Hindi translation. So click for Hindi, click the globe interpretation on your toolbar at the bottom and you can have Hindi translation. Thank you. Go ahead, Shireen, sorry. And so um, to understand Maya deeper, I want to introduce three more terms, Sato, Rajo, and Tamo. And so in Hindi, Sato means pure, Rajo means the second level of purity and Tamo is impure. And so in other words, Sato, the a Sanskrit word is Sattva. Sato is pure joy and wisdom. Everything is in a state of purity. The soul is pure, our food is pure, all of that, that is Sato, where it's pure joy and wisdom. And rajas, which is Sanskrit, or rajo, which is Hindi, is where we have aggressive, overachieving, imbalanced, obsessive, passionate, intense desire. All of that is rajo. And tamas, or tamo, is the lowest level, is laziness and depressed and uh, nothing will work and uh, nothing will make me happy and all of that, right? So everything in life, everything in life can be categorized into sato, rajo, and tamo. We can categorize our friends, 
we can categorize our thoughts, we can categorize our food, we can categorize the movies we see into those three categories, Sato, Rajo, and Tamo. So I'll give you an example of movies. A Sato movie is where it's inspiring. It's inspiring you to have pure wisdom. It's inspiring you to have pure joy. It's inspiring you to take up a spiritual practice. It's inspiring you to live a high life. That is a Sato movie. A Rajo movie is where there is a lot of action movies, right? Those are Rajo movies. There's a lot of action. There is a lot of passion. There is a lot of ambition. All of those are Rajo movies. And Tamil movies are where they're doing drugs and they are doing impure activity and they are, you know, that is Tamil. Those are Tamil movies. So these you could say for food, you could say for movies, you could say for friends, anything, right? You can go through those stages. And there is a reason why I'm talking about this because this is important for a star hero to understand. The other aspect that I want to share with you is um, Rajo is not just passion and all of that, but all of these, no, Sato, Rajo, and Tamo, there is a gradual decline. So from we originally are Sato, the soul is originally Sato, and then it declines to Rajo, then it declines to Tamo. And so let's take a car. When you first buy a car, it's brand new, everything is working well, and things are going great. And that is in the sattva stage, it's in a sattva stage, the car is in a sattva stage. A few years down the road, you need needs and repairs and all of that. So it's in the middle level stage, it's in the raja stage. So the middle level stage is, um, it works, but you know, it needs a few repairs. So Sato is pure, Rajo is a mixture of pure and impure. So it works, it, it, you know, it doesn't work all of that. And let's say Tamo is, let's say 10, 15 years down the line, the car is completely Tamo that it's not working. It's too much is needs to be fixed, fixed. You know, the paint is coming off all of that. So the car then is in a Tamo stage. So you see how everything in the world goes through that. So let's say you take this computer, it goes through that. Let's say you, anything, right? Let's say you take the sari, it'll go through the Sato Rajo stages. And so what happens is with a car or a sari, especially a sari, um, if it becomes Tamo, you just throw it out. But if it is the soul that is going through, the soul is Sato to begin with, then it becomes Rajo, then it becomes Tamo, you can't throw the soul out. That is where your star hero qualities come into picture. As a star hero, you have to take the soul from this Tamo stage and you have to bring the soul into a Sato stage. And that is what a star hero is. You have to reverse this decline, this gradual decline, you have to reverse it. And what happens is, whatever happens in, the, in any movie, right? Let's take a really good blockbuster movie like The Avatar. Um, it, it was one of the highest grossing Hollywood blockbusters of all time, Avatar. And so The Avatar, the movie progressed according to what was happening to the hero. The hero decided he didn't want to go fight. The movie didn't go anywhere. The hero decided he's going to go fight. Then the movie progressed. The hero decided he's going to go face his enemy. Then the movie went a little further. The hero decided he's going to conquer the enemy. He, with all of the thing, the hero wanted a mentor. The hero got a mentor. Then the movie progressed like that, right? So in the same way, we are all star heroes. And as star heroes, our world, the whole world reflects what's going on with us. We become impure, the world becomes impure. We become pure, the world becomes impure. 
And so everything really rests on your shoulders. It's almost like we are Atlas, right? Everything rests on our shoulders. And so if I progress, if I become a star hero, and I become a Sato hero, then the world will also become pure because I'm becoming pure. And so that is how important our purity is. That is how important our spiritual journey is. And so we souls gradually bring the world down and we souls have to gradually bring the world back up. And that is what a hero does, right? The hero just doesn't go in and sit somewhere and say, you know, I'm not bothered. The hero comes into action, takes on the world and does it. So in the physical hero, in a physical movie, what happens is all of these, the physical things, the physical dragons, the physical enemies, but in the spiritual world, everything is spiritual. The soul is spiritual, the hero is spiritual, the enemy is spiritual, the enemy, you cannot see it. So everything is spiritual. There's nothing physical about our hero status. So Nische or faith or acceptance, is that deep conviction. So you can also say you have to accept this. You first start with accepting and then you will go to conviction, but you have to first start faith with accepting. The first faith you have to have is I am a soul. And that soul is the actor. And the second faith you have to have is the supreme soul is the producer and director of this movie of uh, is i'm the hero actor and the supreme soul is the producer and director of me the hero actor and the third faith you have to have is my life is a movie it's actually a grand epic movie and i'm part of this very grand epic movie on a really large scale and all actors all the souls are actors in this grand epic movie and I'm one of those actors. And the other faith we need to have is we all pass through the stages. We were pure to begin with. We were Sato, then we, be, we were Sato Pradhan actually. Then we became Sato, then we became Rajo, then we became Tamo and now we are Tamo Pradhan. And so we have to accept that. And accepting that means that I can start my journey back to Sata Pradhan. And so in any movie, like I said, you can't have a movie with the hero sipping tea and lying down somewhere, that's not a movie. So in this movie, in our life, also we have obstacles. And it's part of the grand plan of the movie, right? This, with, without obstacles, there is no movie. And so we have obstacles because we can become conqueror of obstacles and we become we can become star heroes and the last faith which is an important faith absolutely important nischa you need to have is eventually i the star hero i the soul will win i will become victorious over maya winning means I will become victorious over Maya and winning means I will become Sato Pradhan, completely the highest level of purity. And so that is the niche we need to have. And as I said, starts with acceptance and slowly goes down to very deep conviction. So main characters in a movie. The main characters in the movie is the hero, the protagonist. So the protagonist is the main character in the movie and it's your choice. You will be the main character in the movie, right? But it's your choice if you want to play hero or not. The antagonist or the villain of the movie, uh, the mentor or the one who gives guidance in the movie and the, this mentor has special powers and the victim or, you know, some damsel in distress or whatever. And so what we are saying is 
out of all of these characters, right? You are you are the main character of your movie. You can decide, do you want to play the villain in your movie? Do you want to play the victim? Because the mentor part is taken. The mentor part is the supreme soul. That's taken. So you can decide whether you want to play the villain, you want to play the victim, whatever you want, you can decide, right? So why should we play the hero? Why should we play the hero? Oh, first let's talk about the auditioning. So consciously or subconsciously, we audition for these different parts. We can either audition for the hero, the villain, or the victim, or any of those. So for example, let's say I want to play the part of victim, right? For some reason in today's society, people think it's a very high part, but it's not a high part. It's a, it's a part of crying. It's a part of, you know, victim is the opposite of victory. And so if you want victory, don't play victim. But anyway, so let's say I want to play victim and I audition for that. So what do I do? I look around and see who can be the tyrant in the movie, right? I always audition. And so when I play a hero, you know what happens? I look around to see where is my coach? Where is my director? Where is my producer? And so since we are auditioning anyway, we want to audition for the subtle star hero part. And in this movie, in this grand epic movie, if all of us audition, we will all get the subtle star hero part. Everyone will get it. There's no one who's not going to get it because it depends on you. And so why a star hero? Why? Because the hero actors have a part in the entire movie, from the beginning of the movie till the end of the movie, your part is there. And if you think about it, in any movie, the hero gets the highest salary, right? Does the extra get the salary, as much salary as the hero? No, the hero gets the highest salary. So in this grand epic movie called Life, if you become a star hero, you will get the highest reward and the plot progresses the plot progresses as the hero ascends the hero learns something then the movie progresses the hero doesn't learn something the movie doesn't progress so it all depends on us and the movie the grand epic movie, or you can call it universe or drama or whatever, this drama, Baba calls it drama. This drama has a very interesting benevolent energy. If you audition and accept the star hero part, what happens? Then the drama will start to help you. It will give you all kinds of things. It will help you. So we want to, um, we want to make sure because the reward is higher. We want the drama to help. And also I forgot the most important, the, um, the mentor or the director and the producer's eyes are on you. So the director of the movie, the grand epic movie, the supreme soul, the one, the source, his eyes are on you. So why wouldn't you want a star hero part? And so there are different stages of becoming a star hero. I'm going to break here for a few moments and see if anyone has any questions or comments, Eben. Thank you, Shireen. There was one comment uh, Shashikant uh, was asking about the avatar aspect or concept. Um, is that not the perception of the individual soul, the avatar? Was... Ava, the word avatar in Sanskrit, avatara, 
um, is actually it means that um, there is a um, a being, higher being is descending into the physical world. It's a descent of a higher being into the physical world. And so um, a star hero can be an avatar, but it has to go through these, whatever you're seeing on the screen, it has to go through those, those um, stages. Um, so is that, does that answer your question? No. Uh, in Avatar movie, you said that hero, uh, decides how to go for. Huh? So whatever his action is, take drama further. I was just giving that as an example. Right? That is true. Uh -huh. So it, it, could it, could it, it could be any It could be any movie. It could be the Star Wars movie. It could be, you know, that Frozen movie, whatever, right? It could be any movie. But I thought it is the perception of particular producer. Wanted perception of what? I can't hear you very well. Uh, there, there's some disturbance at my place. But okay, I will come back. I will okay. come back. All right, sounds good. So these are the stages of a star hero. And the first stage is waking up then easing into it, then remembering, then cleaning, then being, and then growing, and then returning. And from returning, you go back to waking. We will come back to this slide again and again. So let me progress. So waking up. And so all of you have woken up. All of you have woken up because on a Saturday evening, you could be doing anything, but you're here listening to this. So what that means is you're woken up from body consciousness and you've embraced that you want a spiritual life. And so that is the waking up, the waking up from the mundane life to spiritual life, the waking up and moving away from body consciousness to soul consciousness. And so you have received and you have accepted spiritual knowledge. And so that is also a part of waking up. And also another very important aspect of waking up is understanding that you are a soul, which means that you can neither be created nor destroyed. You are eternal. And so that is why you have woken up because everyone around you is walking around thinking they're corpses, thinking they're bodies and having fear or when will death come? But we understand that death is just a transitioning of the soul from one body to another. Death is not an end. And so that is a very important aspect of waking up. And so when we say, right, dust to dust, it is said of the body, it is not said of the soul. And because the body is made up of the five elements. And so waking up means understanding that you, the soul, are not part of the five elements. You, the soul, are a spiritual being. And a very, very important aspect of waking up is to consider ourselves to be guests in this world. So as guests, if you are a guest and if you're a loving guest, what's going to happen? You go to someone's house, you understand that that is not your house. So you're very loving and detached. You're a trustee. So think of it as you're a guest in this body and you're a guest in this world. So let's take a moment right now and really remember this. So just go within, see yourself as a bodiless soul 
as a luminous being of light. And see yourself in the center of the forehead, behind these eyes, as a guest in this body. And you, the soul, are not only a guest in this body, but you're a guest in this world. And so you are a trustee, a trustee of this body and trustee of everything that has been given to you in this world. And with that powerful thought, you come back to here and now. So the next part of a star hero is easing into it. Easing in is we have to slide very gracefully into spiritual life. We shouldn't fight it. We shouldn't wonder why this, why that, all of those things now. So not to fight anything, not to have conflict about it but we are just easing into it, very gracefully going into our spiritual life where we feel very comfortable with all of the things that are being given to us. And so we breathe into it. We breathe into ourselves being souls, right? There's no fighting. Do you fight that, oh, I'm not a soul, I'm a body? No, you just ease into this. And if you don't ease into it, there's a technique. Just breathe into it. Breathe deeply in and out. And you just think of yourself as a soul and you just reflect and be with that. And that is called easing into this. And so one very important thing that we need to understand is that there is a physical world. And right below the physical world, or right above the physical world, however you want to call it, above, below, wherever, beyond the physical world, there is a spiritual world. And in this spiritual world, this spiritual world can be accessed when we accept and ease into spiritual knowledge because it's there it's there all the time it's moving through this world so we have to start exploring this world you know like when a baby comes the baby everything is new right it's exploring and it's walking and it's moving and it's talking and it's exploring the world it's the same way we have to ease and explore this physical world, the spiritual world. And for that, we have to move away. Our consciousness has to move away from the physical world. And that is the first step of a star hero, easing into things. The next step of a star hero is remembering. Remembering that I am a child of the Supreme Father, the Supreme Soul. And remembering that the Supreme Father, the Supreme Soul is the director and producer of me, the star hero. And remembering that the Supreme Father, the Supreme Soul is the only one capable of taking me from impure, from tamo to satopradhan, the only one. Because what happens is the soul, you could say, is like gold. 
And the more tamopradan we become, the more alloy is mixed into the gold. So let's take this ring, right? This ring is 22 karat gold. What that means is that there's about 4% or 5% of copper in this. If real gold, like 24 karat gold, you cannot um, uh, mold it. It's like very malleable. You cannot mold it into a ring and it'll stay. Right? For it to stay, you have to put some alloy into it. But the reason I'm saying is if you look at this ring, can you tell where the copper begins and where the gold ends or the copper begins? No, because it all looks like gold. It's the same way with the soul. When sato and tamo alloy becomes mixed into the soul, we don't know it's being mixed. But that alloy is there in the soul. The sato, the tamo and rajo alloys are there in the soul. And I have to purify that. And I have to remember that only the Supreme Father, the Supreme Soul is capable of that purification. Because the hearts and the minds of human beings are too fragmented, they're too impure, they cannot do it. So I have to remember, I have to hold on. And my vision has to be on the director and the producer. And that God is the ocean of spiritual knowledge. And we need a daily, daily dose of this spiritual knowledge to become Sato star heroes. It has to be every day, not just a Saturday evening, every single day. So the question you can ask yourself is, do you want to be a star hero? And I'm guessing yes, because you're all here listening to this. If you want, then you can ask yourself the next question, how badly do you want it? If you badly want it, then you have to listen to spiritual knowledge given by the Supreme Father every day. And how to listen to that knowledge every day, Eben will tell you. The next one we have to remember is that God is ever pure. He's the purest being in the universe. And because he's the purest being in the universe, he is the purifier. And a star hero will never forget this. So we have to keep remembering these things. So let's take a few moments and remember. Take a deep breath. Just become aware of yourself as a soul, as a luminous being of light. In your forehead, shimmering. Accept yourself as a bodiless soul. And take a moment now and remember the Supreme Father, the Supreme Soul, a beautiful luminous being like you, right in front of you. You are a child of the Supreme Father, the Supreme Soul. And Baba, God, the Supreme Soul is embracing you, is accepting you however you are, whatever you are. Allow yourself to savor this embrace. Just breathe in 
the affection and the comfort that you're feeling in Baba's presence. And remember, Baba chose you to be a star hero. Baba chose you. He's the purifier, the ever pure one chose you to be a star hero. With that powerful thought, come back to here and now. Om Shanti. <clears throat> the next one that the star hero has to do is cleaning. Cleaning is deep transformation of consciousness. So spiritual knowledge, no? Like let's say soul or I'm a pure soul. It shouldn't just be on a level of, oh, I'm a pure soul. But they should be that deep transformation of consciousness where deep within you, you know that you are a pure soul. And to be able to do that, you have to clean your attitude, you have to clean your awareness, and you have to come to a place of neutrality. No one's virtues, no one's defects, nothing is in your mind. In your attitude has to be so clean, it's neutral. There's no dislike, there is no like. There is no bad person, there is no good person. You just come to a state of neutrality. And that is when you're cleaning your attitude. And that is when deep transformation of consciousness happens. And to understand this deep transformation of consciousness, we need to understand different kinds of thoughts. So today I will only talk about wasteful and powerful. So wasteful thoughts are thoughts that are useless. We don't need like based on the vices, based on too much overthinking, too much obsession, all of that. And powerful thoughts are pure elevated thoughts of the original soul of Baba. Those are powerful thoughts. And so we have to feed our mind a diet of these pure, elevated thoughts. Constantly you have to feed it, right? And then there's the intellect, the buddhi. And what does the buddhi have to do? It has to sustain these pure, elevated thoughts. So you keep feeding the mind but the intellect has to keep sustaining it. And the way we sustain, again, you listen to the knowledge, spiritual knowledge every day. You have to make time. If you want to be a star hero, you have to make time. So you have to sustain with your intellect these pure, elevated thoughts. And you keep remembering I, the soul, am a master, a hero. I, the soul, am a master, a hero. Keep remembering, I am light, I am eternal, I'm a master, a hero. I am light, I'm eternal, I'm a master, I'm a hero. Keep chanting that. And the, it's a soundless chant. It's not only a soundless chant, you think about it, you visualize it, you see yourself that way. As light, as eternal, as a master, as a hero. And then comes being. And to come into being, right? It has to become part of your being. You have to bring your heart into this with your heart. You have to do this. 
It's not just intellectually, but with your heart, you have to do this. You have to accept Baba with your heart. And then the very important aspect to bring this into your being is you have to do early morning meditation. Take time, half an hour, 45 minutes, early in the morning, you have to do this. And then it becomes part of your being. Again, I'm going to reiterate, spiritual knowledge, which we call the murli, is very important. And so this morning meditation and murli, it will help you make everything part of your being. And so that is the being part where you're integrating all of this into your life and you are being it. And then growing. So in life, right? You have a toddler, you have a teenage from a toddler, the toddler becomes a teenager from a teenager, the becomes a youth from youth becomes a little older adult and from adult they become middle age from middle age they and then they become old and then right every single soul goes through this journey every single soul in spiritual life also we have the stages of the soul we have a toddler spiritual phase we have a teenager spiritual phase we have a youth spiritual phase we have a mature spiritual phase. So we have to keep growing. We have to keep maturing emotionally and spiritually, and we have to keep growing. We don't get stuck. We don't get stuck in the toddler phase. We don't get stuck in the teenager phase. You know, the teenager phase of spirituality is we rebel against everything. We keep questioning why, 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 no, why not? I don't want to do this. I don't want to talk to you, you know, teenagers. You don't wanna get stuck there. You have to keep progressing. You have to keep moving. And so the structures, right? The structures like the center, the spiritual center in this case, Anubhuti, will highly color and strengthen your growing. So you have to follow some guidelines. And the main, main guidelines is, of course, morning meditation and murli is the main guideline. But the murli also, right? Just because, oh, I like to listen to murli from Madhuban. So one day I listen to murli from Madhuban. I like to most listen to murli from, you know, Toronto. So one day I listen to murli from Toronto. You can't do that. You pick your center. Your center is Anabhuti and you listen to murli from Anabhuti. Because there, it's important. Remember I said, I'm your grandmother. I, I really feel like your grandmother because, you know, spiritual life, 25 years is a long time. So I'm practically your grandmother, uh, spiritually speaking. And so um, they are the guidelines, right? This structure, these guidelines will color and strengthen your spiritual progress. So make sure you are in the guidelines and Eben will take another class and will tell you more about guidelines. I'm only going to say this much because I don't want you to hate on me. So I'm not going to say too much more. And so, but you have to integrate the knowledge you are listening into your life. And so the soul will grow because you don't want to get stuck in any of the stages. You just don't want to get stuck in the toddler phase because there is beauty in the mature phase, right? There is beauty in it. And then we have the returning. So before we return, right? This returning is to our original state of being. But before we return to our original state of being, the reason why we are, do not return to our original state of being is we make a mistake. And the mistake is we think that the vices are us. You get angry and you think, oh, but I'm an angry person. 
you have fear and you think, oh, but I have fear. And the worst is you think you cannot live life without fear or greed or anger. And that is the mistake we are making. The soul in its original state doesn't have any of those ego, anger, or fear. doesn't have lust, attachment, none of those things. The soul in its original state is completely pure. And you have to accept your pure self. So your reward, right? So when you return, you're returning back to your original self with a reward because you've gone through a journey in a hero, right? In any movie, the hero gets a big reward. When he's going back home, he gets a big, big reward. So what is your reward? Your reward is as grand as your capacity to understand purity. Your capacity to understand the grandness of the reward, that is your reward. So I'll give you an example. I'll give you a story. So there was once a man, he inherited a carpet. A beautiful, beautiful Persian carpet. Handmade, gorgeous Persian carpet. He goes to the most expensive carpet store in town and he says, I want to sell this carpet. And the owner says, okay, how much do you want for it? And the man says, a hundred dollars. And the owner is perplexed. And so he looks at the carpet up and down and he, you know, he's an experienced person. He understands that this is a very, very good carpet. He says, okay. And he takes out hundred dollars, gives it to the man. And the man is very happy with his hundred dollars. And he's walking out the door and the owner calls him back. And he says, I have one question. Why do you, why did you sell this carpet for only a hundred dollars? And you know what the man says? Is there anything more than a hundred dollars? So the man couldn't comprehend that there is more than a hundred dollars. So the most important thing about returning with the reward is we have to understand what the reward is. Our reward is not just, oh, some good relationships here and there, a promotion at work and a few little more money. And, you know, your children behave the way you want them to behave. Your spouse behaves the way you want to behave. That's not your reward. That is peanuts. That is shells, you know, Cody. That's just shells compared to the diamonds that are waiting for you. So understand the reward. Understand the beauty of being pure. Understand the beauty of waking up in the morning and talking sweetly to Baba. Understand the happiness you get from listening to the Murli. Understand the reward. And so when you understand this and when you are able to come into your own being, the bodiless soul, the pure soul, then you are no longer a slave, but you are a compassionate, humble instrument for Baba. So when you're returning, you have to not return empty-handed. You want to return with the biggest reward and as a compassionate, humble instrument. And then you understand that you're a whole, you're unlimited, you're connected to God and you're connected to everyone around you. And so when you have all of this, you're returning, you want to go and live in a mountain somewhere as a monk? No. You have to discover yourself and you have to, that essence of who you are, that one specialty, that one thing that you can contribute to the world. And you have to express it through seva. And then what happens? So you went through waking, easing, remembering, cleaning, being, growing, and returning. And if you return with all of those things, you can go wake up other people. But you have to go through this journey, okay? 
And you have to go through this journey for the reward also. You can't just say, you know, I'm going to go sit somewhere and I expect the reward to come to me. No, the hero has to go through this journey and the hero has to do all of these things to become a star hero. And then you can come back and you can wake up other people. Acha. So, angels, what are your questions? What are your comments? You can unmute yourself and you can share also what really resonated with you um, or what points that really made you think deeper about Baba's knowledge. I absolutely loved it. I, it just totally spoke my language, but that's because I have a theater background. Um, and this is Elizabeth. Um, Shireen Ben will sometimes call me E Ben. That's my Choti Nam, <laughs> my little name. Um, uh, I really appreciated the value of the journey of the actor and not to belittle that or or sell out you know because inside I do feel like we have a little kid in us that goes no I want it this way <laughs> right and I just feel like this is able to we have all those parts in us sometimes we can be a victim and sometimes we can be a real hero um and I think we have that ability and to recognize it. And would it be, I'm now I have a question for you. Can we, you know, use these characters to empower the hero? Like and which, well, I guess I, I want to, I want to be careful not to give myself a hard time. If I ever, I fall into a victim state of consciousness. Don't give yourself a hard time, but don't stay in it for more than one second. Right. <laughs> it is not useful. To be victorious, we have to not give in to the victim consciousness. We are star heroes. As star, if the hero of the movie itself, the grand epic movie, the drama, if the hero is thinking it's a victim, then where is the movie going? Right. And there's the many important elements of this movie. If you don't accept, do you think there are 10 other people waiting to come to play a hero? No, you have to accept. You ha we have to wake up. Mm -hmm. You know, in like a regular, um, regular firm, no? Like in a company, if someone is not doing their job, they get fired. Here, there is no firing. Mm -hmm. How do you let go victim mentality? Constantly, constantly reminding yourself, I am light, I'm eternal, I'm a master, I'm a hero, and the supreme soul is my director. You constantly have to play this, constantly have to play this. There has to be a change in consciousness. Also, the, the Supreme Being doesn't have limited consciousness, only sees my beauty and is invested in my hero, that star hero within. Right, right. Is that work, Portia? Or is that put yeah. chat? Yeah. Okay, thank you. Uh, Gita, do you ha have a comment? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yes. I like the point when it says, <clears throat> when you say obstacles are part of any good movie. So if I want my life to be a good movie, I have to overcome all the obstacles. That's what you mean, correct? Yes. So to bring my qualities out. Yes, yes. And I have a good. question about one small point. I'm not very clear about it. Uh, 
Where is it? Uh, you said something about breathing. Yes, easing. Mm -hmm. This point was like easing into spiritual life, feeling comfortable, breathing, and exploring the spiritual world. What do you mean by breathing? Like the breathing exercises, just breathing easy? Yes, breathing, breathing means like, yes, on a more... Um, uh, mundane level on a more so uh, 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 they're different layers right on the top of topmost layer you could say it's breathing but Dadi Janki always used to say breathe in breathe deeply breathe in remembrance breathe in being a soul right so we are breathing all the time yes. but if I connect my breath to remembering I'm a soul when I connect my breath to remembering the supreme soul then I'm easing into it very gently and gradually. I ease into this. That makes sense. Thank you. Thank Wonderful. you. Thank you, Gita. Shashikant Pai, we, how are you? Any other question? You you feel satisfied? Uh, really, I was thinking about that avatar when you said about the movie, and before that, you said. As a star hero, you have to take Tamo soul to Sattva soul. So uh, I thought it is a perception of individual how to grow from Tamo to Rajas to Sattva. So, no, it's uh, not a perception. This is the reality of the soul. This is reality of what's happening. Um, so how do I know I'm a Tamo soul, right? How do we know any soul is Tamo? It's not like we have to uh, judge anyone. But if we are constantly, you know, doing drugs, if we are, you know, doing all of those things, it's a Tamo soul who does all of that, you know, constantly depressed, you know, you know, doesn't want to do anything. And so it's not like we have to beat ourselves up because we are there. But we have to understand that with the help of the Supreme Soul, we can come out of it. Because all of us, there is a big potential of pure joy and wisdom waiting for us. And so it's not about bringing any other soul. I need to bring myself out and come back into Sato. Thank you. Thank you, Shashi Kantpai. Uh, Lata Ben, Om Shanti. Did you have a question or a comment, Lata Ben? Hi, <laughs> I'm Swarna Lata. I, my, my computer conked off in the middle, so I had to miss a part of it. <laughs> So I will go back and if it is on YouTube, I will listen to it again. Yes, we will have it up uh, shortly. Okay, we, thank you. In a couple days. Okay, thank you. And Om Shanti, Elizabeth sister, can I ask a question? Of course, yes. Yeah, Om Shanti, Shireen sister, I'm a big fan of yours. I have been uh, following your videos uh, quite closely. Uh, my name is Anuja. Om Shanti. Om Shanti, uh, sorry, you might hear a background noise because I'm driving, okay. but I'm on hands free. So, yeah, so what I really loved about the talk and I could resonate with was uh, the fact uh, when you talked about cleaning up, when you asked us to come to the stage of neutrality, where we are not liking something a lot, we are not disliking something a lot, because, because I was having a tendency to like something a lot, even though I have, I have been in Baba's Gyan and I have avoided dislike, but what I have noticed uh, over and over again is that if I am liking something a lot, then the old sanskar takes over automatically and I end up disliking something as well. So the stage of neutrality is what 
is the uh, blissful feeling, right? So basically, of course, you are a detached observer. You do your karam, you be karam yogi, but do not get so excited or so much into liking also. This is what I could really resonate with. Really. Thanks for sharing. Thank you, Anjana. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, I, I, I didn't really have a question. If I have, I, I'll, I'll come back again later. Oh, okay. so no. Point. I, it's a good point. It's a very important point you raised, this whole aspect of neutrality. It's important to remember. Yeah, um, thanks. You're welcome. Uh, Kyoko Ben or um, Sangamitra? Hi, Om Shanti. Om Shanti. Thank you, that was wonderful. And I really love the uh, stages um, of a star hero and also uh, to start with acceptance. And that's where we, and that's where it makes us have a firm faith. And yeah, like after I accept things, then only I'll be able to move forward and if I keep repeating the uh, things, that blessings that Baba gives us every day, that helps us a lot. Like just by uh, taking the slogan every day, if I keep turning the slogan, then that itself helps us a lot. Thank you. Good point. Thank you. Uh, William, you have any uh, insight you'd like to share? Uh, no, thank you. <laughs> okay, good to hear your voice. And so, anyone's most welcome. Mary, I see you're there, and Kiran, um, Kiran Ben. I don't know if you'd like to ask a question or make a comment. I did have a question. It's Kathy. Yes, hi, Kathy. Yeah. Um, so. Maybe I misunderstood, but I thought at one point um, Sister Shireen was saying that the that I, I felt like she was saying that all souls uh, were uh, Tomasic now. And no, no. Okay, let's go back. Where are we? And we are. You could say we are. Um, we are either pure. We are either a mixture of pure and impure or impure. So we are either, right now, very few souls are sattva, right? Very few. Uh, like you can count on one hand or two hands, how many uh, in the whole world. Um, so we are either a mixture of pure and impure or impure. We are either rajasic or tamasic. Not everyone is tamasic. And not everything about us is tamasic. You know, there are many aspects of rajasic too. Oh, okay. That makes more sense. <laughs> yeah, it's not an absolute, Kathy. Yeah. But it really, I how I uh, see this wonderful, uh, well, I'm sorry, Kathy, were you going to say something? Uh, no. Okay. No. It, it's just to help us to stand back from the canvas of life. And there's always going to be, you know, little details and so on. But in the big picture, we may fall into any of these roles where we might play victim and sometimes perpetrator, you know, antagonist. Um, you know, do I ever get bossy? Yeah. Do I ever, you know, I, and so then I have to check myself. But what I really got out of today was not to be hard on myself and just see it. All I have to do is see it. Right, right. But Om Shanti. Yes, Kyoko. <laughs> Om Shanti, uh, Sister Shireen, thank you for the workshop. Um, you explained everything so naturally and easy to understand um i really appreciate it that um the loyalty to belonging to a center 
or some kind of study place to read the Muli together with the sisters and brothers. Um, when I started this journey with Baba, there was no choice um, to pick this center or that center. Um, it just, it was the way um, it was. We go to a teacher's house and then we study together. And now we have Zoom, we have different YouTube videos. So everybody has a choice, but um, even then, um, I think it's good to have a sense of belonging to a center or a Gita Pashala. And so that uh, we have this group of like-minded spiritual students studying together. So thank you for that point. Om Shanti. Yeah, yeah. it really strengthens us. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you, Kyoko Ben, very much for that. It, we're a family and this is, we have these programs so we can be together and feel comfortable to share and, um, you know, to go deeper into the knowledge. And it's so lovely to use a model. You know, we're storytellers. We as a human presence uh, souls, we love to tell the story. So why not use it in such a way that I can redefine myself and create a hero story for myself, a new story. Right. Um, can I ask you one more question? Sure. I have a small doubt. Mm -hmm. When uh, you explain Sato, Rajas and Tamas, for Rajas, you said aggressive, unbalanced activities, obsessive, and intense desires, correct? Yes. Now I, mean, I understand plain intense and simple, desires. Plain and simple, in plain and simple, that is like, yes. you know, Rajas, rajas, like you have ambition, you want to do a lot of action, that kind of Rajas. <laughs> and also too, if I may add, uh, uh, Gita, it's a, a not a value system based on the Ayurvedic, like, uh, because you need to have movement for healing and uh, flow. You know, Rajasik is a movement, yeah, yeah. but when it, but a value mm -hmm. system of behavior, it's, mm -hmm. you know, you can't, you're not at peace. You're not at peace with yourself. And um, the Tomsik would be the quicksand. You're stuck. You're hopeless. You've, yeah. you, you mm -hmm. really, um, think not well of yourself or of any other actor or of the drama. So it's it's just mm. a different value system. So it's not the Ayurvedic way of looking no. at it as, as a health model, but it's more of the spiritual model and um, in a state of beingness where I feel pure, fluid, mm -hmm. unaffected, mm -hmm pristine, clear, or, or I, I'm, everything is just turbulent, or I'm stuck. And that's how I understand. Is, is that? Um, yes, perfect. Yes. Okay. It, it it's is like imbalance. Is feeling it is that. imbalance. Okay. Uh, I, when you more like a sister. Yes, more like a warrior. It's, and you go after things, no? You like, you want to overachieve. You okay. have a lot of ambition. But, that's righteous. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, okay. Go and Shashi Kant, I Thank think you. you're trying to say something, but when, what were you saying? Yeah. Okay. Uh, it is, uh, uh, when you refer, sister, imbal uh, I think it is the imbalance of uh, three gunas, Rajas, Sattva, and Tamas. When one is dominating, the other gets subsided. When Tamas is dominating, your other you have all these qualities, but if Tamas is dominating factor, so these two get unnoticed. 
So like what uh, kapha pitta in Ayurveda. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So, so that's is, uh, not, yeah. Yes. That's so that, exactly. Thank you. Oh, okay. Yeah. Thank you. Um, uh, that will be definitely a, um, a value system we would use to understand the physical body and and to respect all Very those good. three. But here we're looking at it as um, clarity from density to you know heat <laughs> to coolness and clarity i would just yeah, yeah. Uh, what i've noticed uh Eben, is that in today's world rajas is uh, seems to be on a pedestal right people really say oh let's overachieve you know um I, you have a million dollars, I have $10 million. No, no, I have $100 million. I have, le how can I achieve a mm -hmm. million dollars? So there is a tendency to um, exalt rajas, ambition and more and greed and all of that. There's a tendency to exalt rajas. But a star hero, we have to understand rajas is not the highest. We don't, we don't go after rajas. We have to become sattva. Mm. It's we don't need to overachieve anything. We don't need to, you know, we have enough, we have enough. We don't need more. Yeah, recently I've been thinking about how consciousness is the foundation of all science. And the more clear we are, and the more pure we are, this is how you started this, the statement you started with, then we will affect matter, the world, we will draw to us, we will become a vortex of that pure energy. And um, everyone will be in alignment to that clarity, to that, um, harmonious state of well-being um and ex i love this word acceptance too that you said you know to value yourself and to value every player i i don't judge you i don't judge the other there's an and uh not to to make the other a villain um or you're the enemy yeah we make someone else a villain because we are auditioning as a victim. Mm. So we stop auditioning victim, everyone else will stop being a villain. Yeah, these are very deep points. And even this whole aspect of auditioning, what that means is that I've adopted a state of consciousness and I don't realize I'm attracting those people to me. <laughs> You know, actively, and, very actively. Mm -hmm. It's not that it's just, just happening in your life. You're very actively sitting there and looking for people. And is looking for those qualities in people mm -hmm. and activating those qualities in the other person. And isn't this what Baba's teaching us in the Merli? You know, to recognize and to see what maya that maya doesn't want to be seen know thy enemy is very mm -hmm. important <laughs> it's as important as know thyself and it's as important as know thy god mm -hmm. know thy know thy mentor right know thy know baba know thyself and know thy enemy yeah this is wonderful thank you so much anyone